Okay, this is going to be just a quick video. Um, a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Obviously, my sewing room is an absolute disaster after the wedding. And what I am currently in the process of doing is I'm kind of calling my fabric out. Um, I'm excited by the fact that I am actually going to be getting a real live camera so that I don't have to use my um, phone because using my phone has proven to be absolutely untenable. I cannot do it any longer. Um, so I think in the next few days I will have an actual camera that I can use to uh, create videos for you guys. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about is I'm going to be donating a lot of this fabric to Goodwill. Um, if you if you happen to live in the area and you see something um, that you think you like in the donate pile, and I will kind of go through that real quick when I get this taken care of, I would suggest in the next two days um, that you zip up to the Everett Goodwill on Everett Mall Way to pick up some of these fabric pieces if they get them sorted you know how that goes um here's some easter fabric i think i'll hang on to that because i have some really big plans this is a fabric that i have had since my youngest child was first grade and I remember I pleated this fabric and I put um, little tiny beads on the pleating and I made her just a basic little um, bishop, or not bishop, um, bodice dress. And then on the hem, we attached little tiny twinkly bells. I'll show that dress sometime. I'll do an online trunk show and we'll talk about some of those heirloom pieces that I used to do. Um, this is definitely going to be going to Goodwill. This is something I was working on. Here's some bee fabric I'll be sending. The brown is basic uh, Batiste that I was going to use for, um, ooh, I think it was a uh, stirrup keeper. My daughter rides horses and on her English saddle, I made her some stirrup keepers. You know, you put them on the saddle and then you stick the stirrups in when you're just walking around. Or when you take the saddle off of the horse and that way when you put it away in the barn, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it doesn't allow the stirrups that might be muddy to muddy up your saddle. Okay, this is all falling on the floor. Sometimes this works and sometimes this does not work. I loved this fabric, but this little teeny tiny piece is, yeah, it's it's staying with me. It's too, too cute to give up. And this is part of one of the stirrup keeper pieces of fabric. I think I'll donate it because I think I should share some of the good pieces. And I'll hang on to, I have two I can keep and two I can share. Okay. And this this was fun to work with, and I have no clue if it's going to show up on camera, but it is a very fine baby whale uh, fabric, which is such a delight to sew, um, especially if you pleat it and you do some smocking on it. Um, otherwise, it's just a lovely, soft, perfect little cotton that, of course, I'm keeping. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, this is my family Scottish plaid, so it stays with me at all times. This is fabric I had purchased right here. I was going to make a jacket, and now that, oh, you can't see it right here. Now that summer has come and gone, that's not going to happen. This is a project. <clears throat> I was doing a, um, a sewing class. And this one did not get finished. In fact, the waistband, it's a it's an apron with little pockets. And the waistband is still pinned. And the Swiss 
lace edging it is still attached. I will hang on to that for the student. Okay, and then this is an unfinished pile of doggy kerchiefs that I need to hang on to. Okay. This is a um, printed dotted Swiss that I was making a blouse from. I haven't finished it yet. But it is a delightful, lovely, soft, again, I don't know if it's showing up on my phone camera, but that's a dotted Swiss cotton that, of course, I'm keeping. All right. This is one of the bags that I made a couple years ago. It's just got like a little handle I'm hanging on to that. Okay, I'm going to push all this this way. This is another little bag that I made. You'll probably recognize this fabric right here. It has like a little small squared off bottom. It's lined in a pink rose. It has a snap closure. And then just a little handle, which is filthy. Obviously, I've used it and used it. I used to take it to the um, gym with me. Okay. This is a massive bolt of obviously kind of a mauve color um, uh, broadcloth. I used to, the bolt of fabric was in my shop in Kansas and I just brought it with me because, you know, when you have two girls, you need a lot of that. This is a bag that I'm working on. I haven't finished it yet. Um, it's I, I'm going to try to be real still so you can see the fabric. <clears throat> it's just a little dog print. And then the pocket is kind of a suede fabric with a zip. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I had some other fabric that had these just sayings randomly printed and squared off so I just cut that and zigzagged around it and then I used that same suede on the back and I lined it with kind of a little ditzy <clears throat> but I'm trying to figure out how I want to do um, the top I'm kind of thinking I might put several uh, magnetic closures across the top and then just add some handles on the inside it's a it's a rather nice sized bag like I, I can see myself taking this to the library um, you know putting my library books in it but I haven't finished it so I'm gonna put it up in the top okay this is some more of the um, pink fleece that I, my pattern for my jacket is actually inside this rolled up piece. Okay. And now I'm getting down into the messy part. This was a gift. Um, it's got kind of an iridescent thread woven into it with a very small print. Um, I might use that, so I'm hanging on to it. This is the gauze that I used for my pants that I wore to my daughter's wedding. I my I was trying to take my nail polish off today and I just realized how ugly that is. Oh, well. So anyway, this is a nice gauze. I'm going to hang on to that as well. Okay, this is something we're going to be talking about. Okay, this is a piece of expandable um, fleece. Uh, not fleece. What in the heck is that called? It comes in a roll and you put it inside things. You know what I'm talking about. Batting. I think it's batting. It's my terminology today. It's late in the day. I'm tired. I've had one of those. Days. It's April Fool's Day, by the way. And it has literally been one of those days. Okay, so this right here is polyfill. Obviously not the same thing as I was just holding in my hand. And I'm not going to confuse myself any further. I'm just going to put this over here for now. All right. This is a 
lavender colored twin sized sheet that I was going to use as a fabric uh, template for something and I never did. And this is just kind of a mishmash of ribbons and notions that I haven't used in a long time and some beads. I may end up donating that. This is a piece of fleece that I made some Christmas gifts from. I'm going to donate this. Okay, here is some more. There's another piece of that. I believe I will donate this as well. <clears throat> Quite a lot of stuff. Okay. Okay, that is a quilt that I just don't know what to do with. Oh. Isn't it funny? Okay, this is a project that turned into a fail. Um, I was trying to make a scarf with a pocket and I actually made the pocket on the, <laughs> was not going to work. My, my design failed, but I remember that night well. It was very late and I was very tired, super late. And if you know me, you know I go to bed real early. Okay, so I just put the old quilt in the linen closet for potential future use. This is something that I was using to clean my iron with, and I'll have to wash it to continue doing that. I have a lot of dog clothes in this closet. Oh, oh these are the parts to a sewing machine that I bought. It's really old and it actually is a good sewing machine. I may end up having to sell that one because it's an embroidery machine and I don't typically use those. Okay, this right here appears to be another pile of scraps. That is exactly what this is. So all of this is going to be donated. <laughs> I can only imagine what this looks like to you guys. Okay, so, oh, here's another bag I made. I kind of went on a bag making frenzy and most of them were little dog print bags but you know to be honest these are perfect for as you can hear I have a dog bam bam he doesn't like it when people walk by our house he's but he's a puppy so he's still kind of learning hold on just one moment bam bam can you whisper can you whisper? Shh. Whisper. No. Whisper. Be a good boy. He's trying. Oh, I see somebody is outside walking their own puppy dog. Okay. So, let's see what we have. Here is a daisy print that I have absolutely no idea why I bought it. I bought it at Goodwill. Um, I've not done a thing with it. It's one and three four shards of fabric that I believe I paid $1.99 for. And it's just going to go straight back, boom, to Goodwill. All right. This is a cute little, I don't know, it almost kind of looks like forest feather type fabric. I have no recollection of where I purchased it or if someone gave it to me. Um... I don't know. I don't think it's going to go into my keep collection because I don't sew with a lot of yellow unless I'm sewing with bee fabric. 
as in the insect. So that can go to Goodwill. Okay, this is a cute little acorn fabric that I did purchase, and I actually like it. Um, it has a little dark chocolate dot, and then it's got these tiny little acorns on it. It's kind of a ditzy fabric in a way, tiny print that I am going to keep. And then this fabric I purchased on Amazon. It's cherry and dot uh red on white, can never go wrong with that, in my opinion. I've always loved that combination, and it adds a lot to anything gray or black in that family. You have a lot of options with those, so I'm keeping that. Oh, surprise, surprise, we have some more of this to be donated. Got a nice donate pile going here. Okay, here is a cur doggy kerchief that I made. Um, it worked well for my puppy. Um, I did let him wear it. And as he grew oddly, as he grew older and his neck grew a little bit longer, you know, from his body to his head, this would rotate to the front where this was on his chest instead of staying like it did when he was a puppy with this on his back. So I I was planning to do some sort of, um, I was attempting to redesign it, but then I decided, no, he's, he's too big for that now. He kind of looks funny wearing one of these. So I'll donate that. And then this is a lovely fabric. Of course, anything green. <clears throat> it has, um, it's a, It's got a very sturdy hand. It almost feels like a canvas or a duck fabric, but not quite that heavy. Um, and obviously it's this really pretty light green with some little um, circle daisies, some pink daisies, some actual looking daisy daisies. Um, and then this real dark, dark green um, leaf design. And I love this. I think it's it's just precious. So I'm hanging on to that as well. All right, this, I think this shirt somehow ended up in my sewing room because I was painting. Yes, I did get paint on it. So instead of insulting someone, I'll just put it over there in the garbage. And then I always keep a pair of my husband's torn up ripped up blue jeans in here so that if I need a pair to pull some denim from, um, if they're clean and they're usable and the denim is clean, then I know that I can use this for some projects. And I think I have a couple pair down in the bottom of the closet, so I'm going to try to grab those. correct I found one more pair down there and a cute little farm print it's like a barbed wire fence oh you're right in the sun aren't you wow that's not very nice although I'm enjoying the sunshine I'll put you over here so anyway that's like a barbed wire fence and I know that I had like a chicken print or a farm animal print that I was planning to use with this I'm hanging on to it okay the rest of this is So Beautiful magazine from my shop. Oh, I see some more fabric back there. Oh, goodness gracious the things we find when we look hard enough okay so 
Here's some more of that blue horse fabric I think I'll donate. Um, this is a piece of iron-on interfacing I will donate. I have so much of that. <clears throat> this is like faux suede. I was making um, horseback riding show clothes for my daughter, and I finished that. Here is that faux suede that I used on the back of that bag. And I think I'm going to donate it. Yeah, I'm donating that. Here's another press cloth. I keep those. They're too handy. Oh, I found my second B fabric that... Uh, when I bought the collection, this was one of the I, one of the fabrics that came with it. I don't know why it was in the bottom of my closet because I like it and I'm keeping it. Here is another baby whale um, fabric that is just precious. Again, it's little daisies and it looks like maybe some little rosebuds floating around back there. It's a nice huge piece, really, as far as scraps go. Yep, nice. So I'm hanging on to that. The reason I like the baby whale is it makes a great, um, if you're making a bag, um, it's a nice sturdy fabric, has a lot of body, and um, you know, it just lasts and lasts and goes forever. And this is a piece of um, Liberty of London. Why it was in the bottom of my closet, I don't know. I've had it for 26 years. I doubt that you can still get this print and I'm not giving it up. So it stays with me. Okay. So now what I need to do is get that box that I had for my donate items. over there and then I have some plastic bags which this is very ironic the irony of this okay I'm just gonna slip oops unfolded slip these fabrics in and like I said earlier if you happen to live in the area um, there might be some fabrics in here that you didn't see. This is a, oh my gosh, what is that called? Um, Daisy Kingdom. This is a Daisy Kingdom print. There's not a lot of it. I used to sell it by the bolt, and this is truly the end of the bolt. It's like the final, final little bits. So that goes in the box. And this little bag has, um, this is a flannel puppy print. Um, this is just a plain white cotton tone on tone. There's a little bit of um, the family plaid here. Some more of that. I must have bought just oodles of that stuff. And I'm just going to stick this all in this bag because that's donate. Okay, another bag. Right. Now the, this is a fairly heavy um, rayon dry clean only scarf that I don't really care for. Um, I've moved away from the purple phase, although what? I'm wearing a purple shirt. Um, the, I don't like the feel of this. It's as rayon tends to be. It's very heavy. Um, it it was not um, compatible with me, but I thought about using it as a fabric, and then I realized if I had cut into it, it would probably fray and turn into little balls. But somebody might like it. This is a cotton that I was going to use and did not. This is a horse print. Uh, Corduroy, 
it has just a variety of horse prints and western style themes on it. It's going in the bag. <clears throat> And then these fabrics right here, some I kept, like I kept the bigger piece of the little acorn fabric. That looks like a little pansy print. There's some daisies. Here's a stripe, and here is a very, I wish you could feel this. It's a super soft cotton, and it's going. Okay, into the box. And then this is um, a very uneven uh, red with white dots. I've tried to use it um, to teach, well, I was gonna run through it first and see how it worked out, you know, how you can, to teach smocking, you can just go along these dots. This fabric is so uneven. Um, it would be great for crafts, but it is certainly not a good fabric to work with. I couldn't even straighten it out by pulling a thread and then this is just some flannel. You could use it to put inside of a baby quilt or something. Okay, so there's that. Oh, let's see. <clears throat> oh yeah, okay. So this can go in the box as a... These I'm going to keep. Um, this is part of a charm pack that I purchased from Amazon, I don't know, five, six months ago. Um, it's just this lovely little colorway with purple and green and white. Um, it would be great to make like a little charm bag from. So I'm hanging on to that as well. All right. So now we're going to move over to this little white cabinet. <clears throat> This is a box of things I'm sending to my sister. This is a box of things that I need to deal with at some point. <clears throat> the wedding really just kind of got out of control. This is a pink, oh, I'm not even on camera. This is a pink Batiste. Oh, you're in the sun again. All right, what I'm going to do is drop the shade. <clears throat> I can tell I'm tired, I'm losing my voice. Let's see how that works. Okay, not so bad. But anyway, this is a pink Batiste. Um, I always like to have little pieces of lightweight fabric. I feel like they're definitely worth hanging on to. I'm going to put you guys this way. Sorry about all the maneuvering. I'm just trying to get this done before I go to bed because I was going to do a video today. And I'm going to do a video today. All right, we might have talked about this. This is the fabric I sent to my sister. I mean, I made a bag for my sister out of this. I'm keeping that. This is a pattern for a different type of bag that we might be making soon. That goes in my to-do cabinet. <clears throat> That probably helped quite a bit. Okay, and this, this is a clothing pattern. I'm gonna put it in my to-do cabinet. <clears throat> okay, so all of these fabrics right here are fabrics I'm planning to hang on to. Um, my ultimate goal is to organize them by color. Right now, Obviously, that's not happening. Um, everything I have is basically just kind of a mishmash of mishmashiness. That is a word. All right, this is going to have to go up here. That's my paint box. And then this bag right here also has something in it. All right, this is foam I use for when I'm sending things to through the mail. <clears throat> Here's some more of that brown Batiste. This is just a twin size black sheet. I always, if I find these real cheap somewhere, um, I use them for making kind of like a trial run garment. 
I hate to not use them. It's been washed. Um, they're also great for costuming if you ever have to make something. You can find a really inexpensive sheet somewhere, like at Goodwill. Um, any kind of thrift store. And then you just use that as your fabric instead of spending money on fabric. I remember watching a video a long time ago from a well-known YouTube uh, seamstress, and she went to Joanne and spent money on buying fabric for her children to make costumes out of, and I was just wondering, you know, how in the world can you afford to do that? Even if I could afford to do that, I just, ugh. But then maybe I'm, I'm different. Okay, so now on my floor, I have this giant pile of big pieces of fabric. So I'm going to use this bag right here to put this fabric in. And then I have another bag the same size that I'm gonna deal with the other fabric I'm keeping in. I don't like keeping it in a bag because I can't really see it, but at least I know it's not on the floor, on the back behind my serger, in my closet where I can't ever get to it and forget that I have it and then it gets destroyed or ruined or something. Or I go buy replacement of the exact same thing, which seems kind of silly and wasteful. Okay. At some point, all this will be dealt with. I love to put things on shelves and cabinets where I can actually see them. So that's, that's a goal. But I did find a great deal of nice fabric I forgot I had. Okay, this is going to have to do it for this bag. There's this bag. Okay. Here's some more of that pink. Um, Wow, broadcloth, there we go. Yep, I'm very tired, I can tell. And this is what is left from the fabric that I purchased to make the jacket that I wore to my daughter's wedding. I have lots and lots of it left. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but it is pretty. And I got a lot of compliments and it sewed like a dream. So if I ever need a fabric for something dressy, I know I've got that. 